baby Hey everyone, welcome to MT Guitar. Hope you're doing well. Today we're doing a classic Led Zeppelin song, Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You. So much fun stuff to cover, including some awesome history that I'm gonna go through. First though, I wanna mention that we did a poll on the channel, 250 plus votes in Led Zeppelin 1, although the Beatles were really, really close. So the results are 26% Led Zeppelin, 24% for the Beatles, so they were right there. Fleetwood Mac and Radiohead tied for third at 19% uh, and an honorable mention of Grateful Dead at 13%. I thought it would be fun to just post all the lessons I've done of all five bands. All the links will be in the description below for the playlists for those. I've done 24 Beatles lessons. I'm kind of surprised I've done that many. So you can have your, have your pick of those. Check those out. That being said, let's get to this song. Um, this was off of Led Zeppelin you know, their original album. And it's the second track, okay, 1969. Huge, huge, groundbreaking album. Every song on the album is great. They discovered this song through Joan Baez, famous folk singer, beautiful artist. She had a 1962 live album, and this was the first song on the album. Jimmy Page found out about this song, and there was no liner notes about who wrote the song. So he credited the song as traditional, arranged by Jimmy Page, which is what you kind of do when you find like an old folk song where no one really knows who wrote it. It's just kind of out there floating around. Um, very common of folk songs to not have uh, an author that is known. So that was fine. But in the 80s, the original writer of the song was informed and, and contacted Led Zeppelin and she got some back payment. So let's talk about that for a sec. In 1960, there was a, a folk radio show at UC Berkeley where a bunch of folk singers would come on and play some songs. One of those people uh, was named Ann Braden, and although I think her name was different before she married, but Ann Braden, as everyone knows her now, and she played this song, Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You. Well, another folk singer, Janet Smith, liked the song and started playing it around, and she took it to Oberlin, where Joan Baez heard it. And Joan Baez, another folk singer, said, 
I like that. I'm going to play that at my concert. And so that's how this song went over 10 years without anyone being credited. And then finally, uh, Anne uh, Braden was. Okay, so there's some backstory. Okay, now obviously Led Zeppelin took this folk song and made it heavy rock, hard rock sort of thing. Um, with these great contrasts. I mean, there's this real, these really delicate moments with the guitar, and then there's the full band kicking in. So there's four sections to learn, okay? Obviously, the, the, the most well-known one is the one that repeats over and over with a lot of variations, and we're going to cover a ton of variations. I went ahead and just wrote out everything on the Patreon from beginning to end. It's nine pages. So if you want to just play exactly what was played on the recording, uh, check that out. Um, but let's talk about how this song basically has an ostinato, which is just another word for a repeating bass line. Okay, over and over it goes A to G to F sharp to F to E. Actually, what's funny about that is that that progression is very similar to the Andalusian cadence. Okay, so Page, just with his brilliance in arranging this, he sort of added a Spanish element that it there and even when he when he does a little solos and stuff on this song it's very Spanish so really cool so we're get kind of combining folk elements Spanish elements and obviously um, hard rock elements with the with the chorus and the loud parts all right so do head over to the patreon if you're looking for some materials uh, tabs study guides exercises and I really want to thank all the patrons over there you make this channel possible and allow me to spend more time on the videos. So thank you very much. Go ahead and subscribe as well if you don't mind and hit the thumbs up. So let's jump on in and learn this beautiful song. All right, so we've got quite the task ahead and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn a bunch of awesome variations. I do wanna say right off the bat that Paige, if you watch his live videos of this uh, performance, uh, live performances of this song, you'll notice how free he's being with the part. So that's something to keep in mind is he had so many variations in his back pocket that when he played live, he just had the confidence and the ease to use whatever he felt like using, whether it was from the recording or not, right? So we're gonna learn as much as we can and what I recommend for you is to learn them all and then, as jazz players say, learn it to forget it. Just sort of have fun with it as you play the song and pick whatever phrase you want at that time. So we're gonna go through like the first a uh, few phrases with the intro, the verse, the second verse, and load you up with a bunch of variations. The song is in the key of A minor. Okay, that's the first pattern. So, fifth, fourth, third strings first. Now that is going to be thumb, index, middle, ring every time on these arpeggios. All right. So even slower. Then you repeat, but this time you end on the second string. So the whole thing together. Okay. And all that changes is the chords and which strings you hit, but that's going to be the right hand pattern as far as the fingers. Lift your ring finger, C add nine over G. So ring finger goes here, pinky goes there. Sixth, fourth, third, second with the right hand. Then lift the pinky, C over G, 6, 4, 3rd, 2nd. All right, now D over F sharp. This kind I recommend um, because of where we're coming from, where we're going, etc., and where we need to be with the D7. So that's, that's how I'm doing it. Thumb, in, uh, sorry, 6th string, 4th, 3rd, 2nd. Then to D7 over F sharp here. Okay, so that's... So, so far we have Okay, now thumb, there's a few ways to do this. You could just bar an F chord if you want, but I'm going to do thumb here. 3, 2, 1, so it's an F major. Simple arpeggio there. 6, 4th, 3rd, 2nd. Then E chord, but you just need these strings. You, don't, you could do the whole E either way. I'm doing it like this. Four, third, second. So the whole phrase would be three, four. Okay, nice. 
All right, now a variation. So now if you've done the hard work, now you can have some fun with this. So now we're gonna do, add the third fret for an A minor seven, okay? Uh, first string, so that's gonna be same right hand pattern. Then just release the pinky, and then go open first string. Okay, now C over G, and we do the same melody. See? So instead of doing the second string, third fret, we're doing first string, third fret, and then open. And then everything is the same as before. So let's do the whole intro, then we'll go to the verse. Three, four. Nice, here we go. Now, if we move on to the verse, we're going to just have more variations. There's not really that much that's going to be new until we get to the new section. So let's just go through a few of these here. For the verse, we're going to start the same way as that last line. This time we'll just go to second string. See? And then everything's the same. Now the way Paige played it is he repeated that exact phrase for the first three phrases. And then the fourth line is different. So he does, imagine this is the second time through the verse. Third time, exactly the same. I'm just playing it quickly just so you we get through the form, but I would practice it slowly if I were you for now. Now the fourth phrase is different. So the nice variation here, we go. Same thing as the intro. We go third fret open. Now it's a little different here. The E is six, four, third, first. Okay, so it doesn't take much to create a variation. You just need to make one little change. Then we have the turnaround. Actually, I did it like this, I think. If you don't like using the thumb, you could just bar it or even not bar it, but do this, because it's gonna be that F6 kind of thing. So however it's comfortable for you, I'm gonna use thumb. And then three, two, three. So we're gonna go thumb, four third second strings. Then release the pinky and go to first fret second string. Then E, first E seven, two, one, three. We don't even need the fifth string. Six, four third second, lift the pinky, open. And just repeat the entire phrase. So I'm going too fast, let me slow down. Now you're done with the, you know, with the whole verse form. Now we have one more time of the, uh, you know, the main riff. And again, a variation here real quick. He actually just is open twice, first string. Now the C over G with the first string melody. Here's another variation, just stays in the D over F sharp each time. The D7 over F sharp, then. You go to first string, so the whole thing would be. Uh, sorry. All right. Now. All right. So, wouldn't be Led Zeppelin if we weren't doing some awesome strumming patterns. Really cool stuff here. Kind of like that Spanish feeling I was mentioning in the intro. So, we're gonna do A minor, down, down, up, down, down. Slower would be down, down, up, down, down. Go up. Uh, where am I going here? Uh, sorry. All the way up here. I was doubting myself for a sec. All the way up to the ninth fret and eighth fret. So just move that A minor up. What is it? Up seven frets there. And go down once. It's okay if you hit the sixth string even. It's rock and roll. Now go up, go down two frets. And this is a D minor over A. So it's E minor over A, D minor over A. Very nice. Down, up, down, 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 and then down, 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 down. Repeat. Down, 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 down. I'm actually barely touching the sixth string with my thumb, so you can do that too if you do want to mute. I mean, I would never say don't mute, but it's okay with Led Zeppelin, I think, to not mute as often. <laughs> um, they kind of like that dirtier sound. So, there you go. 
once you speed it up, it sounds like that. All right. All right, I think that does it for the, um, for the variations. You've got enough there. So let's move on. So there's a verse. So all the variations I taught you of this riff, just start having fun with it. All right, that's a very common one. That's a very common one. So just try them all out and just go for it. Um, after the verse, then we have another, you know, uh, section of this, but this time we lead to something else. So I call this the transition or build up to the main chorus where it gets really, you know, um, rocking. So this is the part that's probably the most difficult, honestly. And I noticed that Jimmy Page usually skips this part in the, in the nineties, probably for good reason, just cause it's like, he, do, he doesn't necessarily want to stretch his fingers like that. This, this is a lot to just do live at a rock concert with thousands of people watching. So a lot of times in the studio, you can pull off all this stuff, but you don't necessarily want to live. So that being said, if you want to skip this, you can just do uh, just basically the main riff here instead. But we're going to do what he did in the, in the studio recording, and that's going to be this nice A minor 9. I mean, I love this chord, and I have big hands, so I kind of like these stretches. Uh, they're not for everybody. So, open 2, 4, 1. It's an A minor 9, basically, or add 9, I should say. Now we're going to do 5th. Uh, fourth, third, and then the first time he goes open on the, on the studio, but every other time he goes to the second string. So either way. I'm just going to do second string because that's the one he normally does. Then he goes up to seven, nine, eight, four third second strings. Same, right hand arpeggio. Then this fun one here, seven, seven, eight, then seven, seven, six. So nice and slow, that would be. Very difficult to get up to speed, to be honest. But fun. If you can pull it off, you kind of feel like you're always balancing on the edge of not, not making it work. There you go. He does that four times, and then uh, we get into this. Okay, this this part. So I'm gonna teach you three versions. I did them all in the demo. Here's the first one. It's the actual electric part that you'll see him do live, and that he did in the studio recording, where it's just octaves. Okay. Um, the reason he didn't probably want to do power chords is because of this sucker right here. You can't do an F sharp power chord. So. Don't, don't worry if you don't know what I'm talking about, but it's kind of voicing the D over F sharp. So we're gonna do what he did first, then I'll show you two other options. Three to five, or sorry, three and five uh, octaves of G. And then you just think of this three sliding up two frets with the ring finger along with it. So it's down, up, on the, when you go up. Let me go slower. Down, up, down, up, down, down. Three, five, five, three, five, five. Okay. Then we go to, believe it or not, open, and then up on the three, five here. So that's the G. Or think of it like down, up, down, up, down, down. And just do that at the right time. Easier said than done, I know. Then, same thing of fret down. Then, same thing of fret down, but half of the time. Just so you have time for basically up, down, down, and then E, down twice. Just go to the E chord. So, the whole thing, very slow. Three, four. Four. And add a little slide down. Just for flavor. Now, the second option would be power chords. A little fuller. Here's the problem. I don't like that sound. So I'm doing this instead, just lifting the index for the open. 
and keeping these two fingers down. I mean, I like that as much. It is a little different. It's kind of a mixture of different elements that may not be true to the recording. But I think it's fine. So, like that. Then two, five, four, because you need D over F sharp. You can't really do any other notes. So I, I, I would just try it out, see if it's okay, and go open to second fret. Second, uh, sixth string, goodness. Can't speak tonight. This. Kind of weird, but it, it is what it is. And then open to one on the F. Two. So the whole thing would be three, four. Okay. That might be my least favorite. The, the, the third is very good for acoustics. So we're going to do um, A minor. Lift the fourth string and put it down in the same rhythm that we were doing before with the sliding and with the ha with the hammer on not the hammer ons but the placing of the fret. Okay. Now when you go to the next chord, do the same move, open the second fret. Boom. Then D over F sharp, do that move with the third string. Say that move, I just mean open to, to the fret that it belongs at for the chord. That's clear, kind of a not a very typical concept, but it, it, it is important for Led Zeppelin stuff where he does, Page does quite a bit of that. Now, F major seven, you're down, open, on, and then third string, put the middle finger down, up, down, and then open just everything on an up, E major twice. Thing three, four. Again. I mean that's badass in my opinion. Okay. If if that F is annoying, just strum. Strum it too. But he's doing open. You can very clearly hear it. Um, on, on, on the acoustic track. So, either way, it's four phrases, but you might want to start with this for the first couple, and then in the last half, try this out, or just pick one or the other. When you're done with the, with the chorus, uh, there's F to E, so I shouldn't forget that. It's down, up, down, up, down, down. There you go. Um, we're really making great progress now. If you're still watching this video, uh, congratulations, you've made it through all the hard parts, except for one. <laughs> so, funny, it just song just never ends. It was quite it was quite a feat to get this all written out. So, there you go, then it's another one of these. Okay, down, down, up, down, 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 all in A minor shape there, uh, twice. Then it's a little guitar solo with some of these variations here. Here's the standard one. This is what he does the first time. Then he goes up. So very similar to the intro. Okay. Or pretty much identical. Now, uh, when he starts singing the verse, when, when Plant starts singing the verse, Paige starts doing some beautiful stuff here. All right. So we've got something to learn where we take that bass line of A, G, F sharp, F, E up an octave just does this amazing thing where it's kind of classical. He just sort of takes this melody and puts the bass at a higher octave. It's really cool. So there's the pitch for this awesome section. We're going to get an A minor seven here, seven, five, eight, and you're going to go just that nice little roll there. Then go to sixth fret for an A minor flat six, actually. It looks like an F triad over an A, which is also accurate to say. Okay, so that would be... Okay, now we're going to go to a G7 kind of triad here. So that's going to be 5th fret, 4th fret, 6th um, fret, right? 4, 3rd, 2nd strings here. And it's all over an A bass. So we do the A bass, and then roll the strings there, 4th, 3rd, 2nd. Now just move the pinky over to the 5th fret, kind of becoming a G6. Interesting stuff. Now he, we go to this cool uh, sort of... C shape of D, if you know you're caged, and that's going to be at first, uh, um, excuse me, a fifth fret second string, so that would be kind of a D add nine for a sec. 
then go to a D triad. All right. Now, F major seven. So you could put all the fingers down, but I'm going fifth, fourth, third, first string open. So I really only need this, actually. And then E. So go here, you know. Six, fourth, third, first. Kind of tricky there, actually, because you got to spread the strings out. So the whole thing would be slowly three and four. Then there's a couple of variations. There's one time where he goes, actually the second time, where he goes like that, fifth to sixth fret. And then everything is the same. All right, so he does that throughout the whole verse, sometimes going back to this, whatever he's feeling like in the moment, probably. It's very fluid the way it all, the way the progression just keeps going and he just chooses the variation he wants. It's it's kind of mind blowing. All right, so so then actually that leads to the chorus again. So we've covered everything because then it's chorus, another verse where that's happening, and then another chorus, and then a solo, and then another chorus, and it just keeps going. There's nothing new until the ending. Okay, so then we have the ending, and that's when it's sort of this, almost like cadenza here. It's really cool. It's like F to E. Robert Plant's just singing, and there's no time, you know, so F to E twice, but the, actually, I'm playing the wrong E, so after, here's the bar chord F, then he does this E, kind of a Spanish sound, O, two, two, four, O, O, and then F again, now the second time he does it, he does a hammer-on thing there with the second fret, and then it's this ending here, also pretty tough. Um, nine, and then skip the fifth string, or mute it, I mean, and then seven, nine, ten. And pinch all the strings three times more with the fingers. Now move both of these fingers down a fret, pinch. Then, this is pretty hard too, but seven, third string, seven, five, five. Move the middle finger down a fret, and then you do this little thing here, uh, where you do the A minor add nine, A minor nine kind of thing, um, and you're just going to do fifth, fourth, third, second, and then first, second, first, second, once more, A minor bar chord. And that's it. Man, I can't believe we did it. Hopefully that was clear. I kind of had to just um, rush through it because, man, it's such an epic epic song. So hopefully that helps and makes sense. And, you know, hopefully I was going slow enough when we actually did the sections that you can play along to learn it. All right. So enjoy and have fun.